So finding noble purpose in your work as a daymaker is something that we really take to heart. What's a noble purpose? For us, 400 people that are daymakers that touch 10 people every day, we touch 4,000 people directly as a company. 4,000 people. But if we take daymaking to that state of reverence, in that we know that we can change the world by how we connect with someone's heart, we can get them to go on and touch 10 more. Would you agree? So if we have four, 400 people that touch 10, and then they leave our premises and, and touch 10 more, that's 40,000 people every day in the Twin Cities that we affect. 13 and a half million impressions a year. So we know that by the way we do manicures, the way we serve coffee, the way that we book appointments, we're making Minneapolis-St. Paul a better place to live. Because those people go out after they've been touched, much like the stories that you've heard here, and do that. What I've also found is that people work in different ways. Talent without passion is a job. Would you agree? Anybody know anybody that's got a job? They're talented, but they're not passionate about it? Yeah? This is where 90% of the world lives. Sometimes because we haven't given them the purpose to rally around, it's not the doing, it's the being, right? The other is, the next one is, passion without talent is a hobby. That's my golf game. I, I love golf, but I can't get under 100. But here's the sweet spot. Being talented in what you're passionate about is a calling. I've heard a lot of people here this last couple of days that are living their calling. It's very obvious, isn't it? Can you tell a sports person that's living their calling versus treating it like a job? I get to hang out with musicians quite a bit, and listening to somebody that is just playing as a job is quite different than somebody that considers it their calling. Right? So we're very fortunate to be living in that. So where do you find inspiration and beauty? I find it, I spent the last nine years in Maui, Hawaii, and it's easy to find inspiration from nature. But what really interests me is human nature. I love being inspired by human nature. This is one of the things that inspired me the most the last few years. This is a wave that hits the North Shore of Maui every 12 to 18 months called Jaws, or Piahi. This is a 60-foot wave. You see the guy? You can't hardly see him. They get towed in with a jet ski and get thrown into the front of the 60-foot wave that lands in four feet of water. You don't do this as a hobby. There's about 12 people on the planet that can do this. We went out break of dawn, and all of a sudden we heard the waves, and it's hard to put it into context because a 20-foot wave or a 60-foot wave, what's, you, you can't tell. But then all of a sudden, my friend said, there's the first one. Because they have to come from about 10 miles down the beach. And I said, where? He said, that. I said, oh my god. I was just in awe. I'm sitting there with my binoculars going, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and he throws himself in front of this wave. Totally awe-inspiring. They don't get paid to do this. <laughs> there's no golden parachute. There's no employment contract. They do it because they're called to do it. Totally awe-inspiring. This motivates me very much. So does this. <laughs> this is my wife's 95-year-old grandmother, June. So this is Grandma June. Grandma June lives with us in Maui, Hawaii, and she spends time with us in, on Lake Minnetonka in Minnesota. She loves to jet ski. 95 years old, loves to jet ski. We have to go find her sometimes. <laughs> but she loves to jet ski. She's totally inspiring to my 12 and 15 year old daughters. She walks three miles a day, does, uh, or three miles a, a week, does water aerobics four times a week, right? reads 500 pages, knows more about the Minnesota Twins and, and Vikings than I do. And she's sharp as a tack. Here's another one of her. <laughs> My daughter wanted to go swim with the dolphins in Oahu, so we took Grandma June with. I bought tickets for my two daughters and my wife. We're walking into the aquarium park, and she said, you know, I met Charles Lindbergh when I was a little girl, but this is even bigger. 
said, what are you talking about? She said, I wanted to swim with the dolphins forever. I said, you want to swim with the dolphins? I only bought three tickets, right? So I go up to the counter, I said, I only bought three tickets, can I get a fourth one? She said, sure. I said, do you do 95 year olds? And she said, talk to the trainer. So we go into the park and I go over to the trainer and she says, well, isn't she in pretty good shape? I said, yeah, she's in pretty good shape. She said, well, yeah. So we're watching these people, the lagoon is twice as big as this room, right? You swim out to the middle of the lagoon and the trainer goes like that and the dolphins race around, race around and you grab on with everything you can and they race around the thing and then they throw you up on this ramp. <laughs> so now it's their turn. My wife goes first. She races around, races around, flies up on the stage. She's like, oh my God, that was unbelievable. Then my daughter is like, oh my God, that was unbelievable. Grandma June starts swimming out into the middle of the lagoon. Everybody came with their cell phones. And like, oh man, it's going to be a YouTube sensation. I got 911 dialed in already. She swims out into the middle of the lagoon. And the trainer goes like that, and the dolphins take off and they race around. She grabs on with everything she can, and the dolphins go like this. Oh, oh. They knew. They knew. They brought her over to the ramp. And they laid her on the ramp. Do we know? I heard a lot about perceiving customers' needs. These dolphins have a brain this big. And they knew. They knew. Unfortunately, in Indonesia, when the tsunami hit, thousands of people perished. But not the animals. The animals ran for cover. Not only did people not sense the tsunami coming, they didn't notice the elephants leaving. We get bark marks. You stand so close to the forest, you can't see the trees. Does that make sense? So let's be the dolphin. Train our people to be the dolphin. How do they know that we don't? We certainly have the capacity. This also inspires me. This was this past April. I'm not a water guy. I moved from Minnesota to Maui. I surf when it's like two foot waves and somebody pushes me. <laughs> My wife said, let's go whale watching. So I think we're going out on one of these big boats. She said, I got some kayaks. So a friend of mine, his wife, and my wife and I, we paddle out about a mile offshore, and these whales start coming up around us, 20 feet from us. <laughs> my God. And then they went away. And I said, I think it's time to get back now. <laughs> Swell's coming up. And I look at the sun, you know, time to get back. <clears throat> One of my friends said, there's another pot about a mile ahead. And she started paddling like crazy. My wife started paddling like crazy. And I'm in the back going, <laughs> okay, come back. So we go out to this pod, and they dive underwater just as we get there. Now we're two miles offshore. All of a sudden, we heard this. I recorded on my camera the sound, that's how loud it was. This guy jumps in the water. And he goes like this. So his wife and my wife put their snorkels on, they jump in the water. Now I'm sitting on top of the water going, what would Grandma June do? <laughs> Man, it took everything I had to put that snorkel on and slide off my kayak. I was holding onto it like this, and I looked down. There was a 50-foot whale 20 feet below us, singing. Right? And I could see this being just breathing. And all of a sudden, he started to rise, and I was going, whoa. <laughs> and he went back down again. He just hovered there for three, four minutes. He took off. What would Grandma June do? Had I not known Grandma June, I would have never done that. We never know who we're inspiring in what ways. The gift she gave me by just living her life. She didn't tell me to do it, she showed me how to do it. Amazing. 
This also inspired me. These are my two daughters. They're entrepreneurs. Location, 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 not really. Here's what I learned from this. They were selling organic lemonade. People would pull up. They did something brilliant. They didn't put a price on it. People would pull up and say, how much is your lemonade? My daughter would say, as much as you care. <laughs> as much as you care. They made 120 bucks in an afternoon. <laughs> People care a lot. Right? And this isn't, a bad, this isn't a busy street. Totally amazing. Had they asked for 50 cents, they would have gotten 50 cents. As much as you care, got five, ten dollars. Totally amazing. This is my favorite salon in the world. I love just cutting here on the beach. And people always come up and they want a haircut too because of the fun we're having. It's not the haircut that I'm doing, but they see how much fun we're having and that I, it's my calling. I love to do this, right? This is also inspiring. Every year we have Daymaker Day at our salons. Uh, last year we did complimentary salon and spa services for educators and teachers. 722 <coughs> teachers in the Twin Cities got haircuts and spa services at June for free, just thanking them for adding to the community. Right? All, of the tips, all of the tips that they that they gave staff went to the literacy council. We did this because we wanted to give back to educators because they were getting beat up in the press and I, they're just, it's, it's an unfortunate thing. What we found was that we got a ton of new business out of this. Not by design, but by default in that they went to school on Monday and the mothers would say, God, your hair looks great. Oh yeah, you should go to Jude, they're fantastic. They gave us this complimentary blah, 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 blah. We got all this new business, not that the teachers came back necessarily, but the mothers of the classroom did. Totally phenomenal. This also inspires me. Every October, we do this event where we bring in cancer clients and we treat them to a hair spa service as well as the caregiver. This was a mother-daughter. The daughter had been taking care of her mother for nine months. She needs just as much care as the woman that's going through chemo, right? So we take a photo of them. Sometimes, unfortunately, this is their last photo together. 4,000 head shaves we've done at Jude Salon Spots. We've done 4,000 head shaves. Not just in October, but whenever anybody is facing hair loss, we bring them in and we treat it as a ritual. That's really inspiring to me. Transformations are really interesting. This is, we can go 